Hello there guys and welcome, welcome back to the channel. So this is one of those videos which I actually didn't really want to make for this season of Battlegrounds and uh, I have well, quite good reasons I suppose but everybody keeps asking for this video in particular so I'm going to do my best to break down season 7 victory track meta and the possible or likely MVPs. And the reason why I didn't want to make this video is the fact that it's an open meta. It's just no nodes that really restrict or limit you at all uh, for the entire victory track. Because number one, we have brute force here. The one thing that a lot of people don't know about brute force is that it is affected by class relationships. So, uh, for instance, if you are fighting with neutral class relationships, you're going to be taking, I don't know, 500 damage. If you have class advantage, you take 250 damage if you are fighting with class disadvantage you take 1000 damage or something similar to that extent like 75 damage 750 damages so the one thing that you will want to note in the upcoming season is that you ideally always want to fight the class advantage to minimize any brute force damage that you take or obviously use champions that uh, you know, have some sort of power control or can make the AI more cooperative, like in Towns and Infuriates. But in general, this does not disqualify any champions from being used at all. This Brute Force, and uh, the only thing that will happen due to Brute Force is you will either take a little bit of damage or you will not take a little bit of damage. But you can use literally any champion in Brute Force situation. And then the other node we have is fight or flight and fight or flight again is a node that's extremely generic it doesn't disqualify or it doesn't uh, you know make any champion op it is a node that uh, can slow down the fight slightly but if you watch the timer you know it can be basically neutral you just need to make sure you're away from your opponent every 12 seconds when it would trigger you're gonna go unstoppable and you can actually use that unstoppable to gain an easy opening afterwards it doesn't give you any specific damage boost but it doesn't also slow you down or hinder and as an end result you will in fact just have very open field where the best strategy for the upcoming season is just to fill up your deck with 30 of your strongest high strength most efficient Balgrounds champions now we have Dauntless which will in fact increase the speed a lot of champions can finish the fight because typically uh, in order to fill your uh, relic meter <laughs> Also, uh, side note here, when Kabam refers to Spirit Gauge, it's just effectively Relic Power Meter. That's what Spirit Gauge is. And with this, Nukier champions can become even Nukier because you will be able to drop that level 2, then go for a combo. Uh, and at that point, you know, your Spirit Gauge should be pretty much filled. So Relics will have bigger impact on the next season. But other than that, very open. So, uh, if you're looking for MVPs in every single class, and, and we can easily, you know, I can easily point out Scorpion is going to be great. There's nothing stopping from Scorpion being great. Spot is going to be great. Human Torch is going to be great. Korg is going to be solid defender. Kingpin is going to be great. Hit Monkey is going to be one of the more effective nukes. There's going to be a ton of champions that I don't mention. Obviously, Massacre is going to be very good because he's going to be super nukey and can take a ton of different matchups. Domino is going to do domino things. Kitty is free to be used. Virtually every single champion in the game can be used. Uh, and, and that's all there is to it. Now, there are a few interactions that we need to talk and perhaps highlight slightly. Again, I could have carried on breaking down these champions. We have Besha, we have, you know, Nimrod and Ghost and Warlock and CGR, Hulkling and Hercules and Gallen and Absman and Tigra is going to be OP and uh, Ranger too. Now, the only class that does kind of get a bit of a leg up here, uh, I will point out, is the Mystic class. Because in most cases, when you will be using Mystic Champion offensively, in every single matchup, when you have max MD, at the very least, you will be able to benefit from it by purposely being close to your opponent and giving them that unstoppable buff, which, you know, you can nullify with many of, or most of the Mystic attackers which in return will feed your power meter. So Mystics do get a tiny bit of a leg up compared to other classes just by the nature of every single matchup effectively going up against a champion that can have a buff. So offensively, you know, Mystics will be slightly better than they normally are. But again, I don't think this is going to be translated in some sort of massive Mystic heavy decks being run. 
And then there are a couple of standout champions or a couple of champions that you do want to be wary of defensively more so than you otherwise would. And this is just so you are careful. Number one, we're going to have long shot. Because with long shot, uh, you have if long shot nullifies true strike unstoppable or unblockable buff, long shot gains the matching buff from two to seven seconds. And long shot will have, you know, a relatively high chance to nullify based on its sig level. So, the important thing here is obviously long shot will work fine as an attacker as well. He will be more dangerous defender in this meta because when that node would trigger, there will be one of two options. If you are close to long shot, long shot is going to get unstoppable. And, uh, you know, obviously, if long shot gets unstoppable, then you kind of have to slow the fight down and it's not great. Or, alternatively, you will be away from long shot and you will gain the unstoppable, which is kind of good and all. But, first things first, again, that unstoppable might expire. So, he will his mystic dispersion from that unstoppable buff regardless as would any other mystic but he also has a chance to nullify and copy it and have it on up to seven seconds and be even longer so against long shot you kind of want to make sure that he actually is the champion who gets that unstoppable and that in general can make the fight more tricky it's not like he's going to be indestructible force on defense but he is going to be harder to fight against than he normally would be. And he's, you know, he can be quite annoying on defense at times in Battlegrounds. So Longshot is definitely a champion to include in your deck because he's going to be a bit more finicky to deal with. And uh, then obviously we have champions like Mojo uh, that not only benefit from Mystic Dispersion when a buff expires on you, also has the ability to reduce the duration of that buff and put a degen on you if his ore is active. So Mojo is going to also be more dangerous defender than he normally is. Because you basically have no real option other than to give him that unstoppable buff, which will not always work out. And there will be definitely fights where you're going up against Mojo, you're trying to bait out a special attack, you're not necessarily close to him, or you can't be close to him at that given point in time. Maybe he's throwing his own level 2 or something, and you gain that unstoppable, which is a timed buff, which will expire, which will place Degen on you. So, uh, again, it's not like he's going to be in, you know, insanely difficult on defense, but there will be interactions that make him more finicky and harder to deal with. And then, obviously, to a degree, the same thing goes uh, for all the Mystic Defenders. Because you will have no other option either to slow down the fight, unless you're using like a Mystic against Mystic or something that deals with Unstoppable specifically. Uh, and give them the unstoppable buff, or they, you can claim the unstoppable buff and feed the Mystic Dispersion. So I do expect, you know, Mystics to be slightly more uh, present uh, than they would be in kind of like a completely neutral meta. But at the same time, uh, we can talk about uh, well, the classes and the champions that might, may do slightly better than most people realize, or they would be in empty situations. Because uh, Mystics also often have power control mechanics. So champions like Dr. Doom uh, and champions that can maintain an aggressive playstyle pretty much at all times will be doing slightly better than they normally would be because you will not have to worry about brute force. There is going to be the unstoppable that you can feed on as well. So Dr. Doom is going to be like offensively better than he normally would be, for example. And uh, several of the tech champions as well, because tech is kind of known as the power control class. So Warlock, for example, would be a very solid champion that will likely pretty much never have to worry about brute force being a thing, because as long as you have infection, as long as opponent has willpower, you will manage to be aggressive because you can be consistently power draining the opponent. Similar matter if you have future Ant-Man. Future Ant-Man seems like he's going to be a very, very good champion. Then we have infamous Iron Man with his power control mechanics. He should be working fantastic. Nimrod should be quite good if you can get the power drain on opponent. And, you know, even if you're pushing opponent in three bars, you can still be aggressive champion. So champions with some form of power control will be easier to use at large. But again, I do expect basically to be just like, you know, your highest ranked, your strongest champions in vast majority of the cases 
are going to be the best options to go with. Additional thing that can be quite helpful is stuff like infuriate and taunt mechanics, because if you can make opponent aggressive, uh, then you know you should have easier time baiting out special attacks, making sure that you're either close or far away when you need from them, uh, when you need to be, and you know any kind of form of AI manipulation could be quite helpful as well. So uh, Spider Ham, I think, is going to be quite good. Cassie Lang is probably going to do quite well in this meta as well. Uh, ironically, I, I kind of think OG Spidey would be quite decent for the next meta, maybe if he's fast enough, because he has a ton of taunt, so he can make AI aggressive, so you don't need to worry about brute force. Obviously, he will have naturally quite good matchups against Mystic Champions. And on top of it, uh, he has that deaccelerate. So if the fight does let you throw two level ones, and be aggressive, and you don't need to worry about un opponents being unstoppable, it could work out quite decent. But again, all of this will not kind of like overshadow the idea that everybody's decks are just going to be filled with their rank fours and best Balgrind champions. You know, we're going to see full ghosts and hit monkeys and stuff like that. So uh, the reason for that is again because these nodes are relatively just toothless. I kind of explained the theory that Mystic Champions should be slightly better because every fight will have some sort of buffs involved, power control, and towns are going to be useful because then you rely less on AI being cooperative. But the reality is the power creep in between the middle level champions, who technically maybe would be more suited for these nodes, to the champions that are at the top of the game is too big. And there are things that are good to note. But nothing in these node, nodes will make a, let's say, slower champion fast enough. You know what I mean? And it ultimately is going to be very fast, very aggressive meta, where the name of the game is going to be defeat the opponent faster well, than they can defeat your defenders. This is going to be an absolute nuke meta. In fact, when we are looking at the entire Season 7, then the vast majority of it, probably with the only exception of week four, is going to be like that, which uh, does not bring much joy to me personally, because we have week two with energy resistance, aggression prowess, prowess buildup. There's again zero nodes that will delay you. The only difference here is that you do want to avoid energy damage champions, which is what we did in the last meta, and that is it. Also, the extra prowesses will likely supercharge some of the tech champions. So, you know, that's the only note there. And then we have week three with Empowered Immunity, Fisty Cuffs, and Footloose. And this is going to be the first meta ever, where I would say, or maybe the second ever meta, where recoil masteries are going to be pretty much a must. Because every champion will be affected by Fisty Cuffs. There's going to be no Liquid Courage double edge debuffs anywhere at all. And then rest of the nodes do not prohibit you from doing you know insane amounts of damage and in fact they encourage you to finish fights as quickly as possible in order to avoid dealing with footloose which will inevitably mean that uh in week three of gladius circuit every one is going to be running nuke champions and recall masteries because every single champion in the game in this meta will be able to you know be compatible with recall so uh most of the season seven is going to be super nuky uh and yeah so as far as victory track goes my honest advice uh is just fill your deck with the best the highest ranked champions that you have and you'll do fine the best battleground champions specifically you know and uh yeah it's all going to be about the hit monkeys the ghosts the shang chis the cgrs the whatever else nuke down the opponents the fastest because at the moment whether we like to admit it or not unless there are some nodes that slow down the game overall the offensive champions or and offensive capabilities are significantly um kind of like more ahead in the than the defenders of the game we have like sasquatch but there are so many champions that nuke sasquatch we had winter that was, seemed like a tanky champion for a while but now we have learned to ghost that reintra in 40 seconds. Scorpion can nuke that reintra. Spot can nuke that reintra, so on and so forth. There's 
like virtually no champions in this game that can last more than a minute, I would say, in battlegrounds against an appropriate counter. So, that will be the name of the game. Um, make sure your fights are under a minute, don't make a mistake, and you win. So, uh, that is my breakdown or, you know, prediction for the upcoming Season 7 of Battlegrounds. Let me know what you guys think, and I'm going to catch you guys soon. So, yeah, bye. Hello there guys and welcome back to the channel. So we have all the information about